This is quite the song to start a new lantern year in. But welcome back everybody. Got some Yoshi story playing. And we have Lantern Year 7 that we're going to take on next. And just, you know, do another casual level 1 light line because I can't find Dash. And it's really scary to do anything without Dash. It's possible, but really scary. Like, if I was to do it, we would have had to have made the white lion circlet headband cat eye circlet thing. So I can find the foot and break it of the lion. That way he doesn't constantly grab everybody and murder them. Anyway, before we get started, I'm just trying to catch up on things. It's been a little bit since my last stream. So I see... <clears throat> we just need a stone circle. We will need it because I plan on making a KTAR user. And I'm just reviewing, what all did we get? We have two permanent survival. Encourage and Heat. Ammonia. You know, I'm so, you see how Lantern provides heat? I'm surprised Ammonia doesn't say Ammonia like this. Because it does provide Ammonia. I mean, I feel like it does that same thing. This says Heat Required, and then you got things that say, you know, Ammonia Required. Though I guess drums should say drums too. Anyway, right song of the brave. Okay. We're gonna be doing a lion hunt, so let's put him on the script thing and yep, watch that beautiful script load flawlessly. Ideally. I already set up our survivors, so we're still rocking Lena. She's learning how to master the sword. She's level 2 now, so no more cumbersome. And her accuracy is 9 minus 2, so a 7. It's on 7. The sword's finally, like, respectable. Once you hit level 2, right? And she's got the usual rawhide stuff. She's already max survival because she can't spend any survival because she's immortal, which is hilarious. So she's good to go. Plus one luck is fulfilled with two blue, and we have the one evasion as usual for the rawhide vest. Tinker, stalwart, another reason to bring her. Rhythm chaser, I'll have to remember on arrival. And, uh, yeah, that's her. A bell, we get two survival for departing. This is on arrival. He's holding the bone sickle that we made. And he's good to go. Pretty much everything happens on arrival for him. And our fist and tooth guy is close to mastery. I need to hope nothing bad happens to a bell. Uh, he, hold on, let me count. It's three away four-way. Alright, as long as Lena is the murder target, you know, if we get unlucky with that, then I'm satisfied. But if we don't find paint when I innovate, because we're definitely innovating, if there's no paint but nightmare training, I might just take nightmare training now. We'll see what else comes up. Anyway, I think he's all good to go. For the most part. Yeah. Alright, Gordon's coming along. Gordon with the post-traumatic stress, so we need to use him while we can. Mostly because he's a tinkerer. And he gets- he's at max survival already, so no gains. Two evasion, monster grease, armor. He's using the spear at the moment. You know, nothing special going on. Tiki is joining us again. This we can retilt since we're leaving. Need to remember Red Fist on the start of the showdown, and of course I need to remember this stuff. She still doesn't have the full armor set. That's our goal today! But we have the plus one movement for White Lion Boots. We need to make that last White Lion thing because I want it. I'm tired of seeing this cloth armor on me. Oh yeah, her thing. I need to edit her thing because she lost one of these fighting arts. The downside to the automatic script is it doesn't delete them. 
Touch fighter, red fist, synchronized strike. She lost tough. That's a good fix. Okay. And yeah. She's she's starting to learn axe with the badass counterweighted axe. That is also Procking. I'm just gonna leave it procking because I want the extra movement, but it probably shouldn't be. Okay, we only need to wound once with her. As usual, we'll just, you know, risk our fist and tooth user. Speaking of which, I should change things up. Maybe. No one has the actual luck, right? That, that guy died. And I don't need to change anything up. Alright, we'll just leave everything as is. So everyone is leaving with maximum stuff. We can put the Dark Trader away, and I don't think there's anything else to worry about. So far, so good. I'm just gonna buy you out to the side. Let me move him closer. If they're not skipping next hunt, I don't want them over here. Do some repositioning. Of our kiddos, we have 15? This is 8. 12, 15, yep, 15, oh, and I wanted to mention I added a new token now, dodge token, I'm probably gonna add one for each action, I didn't do encourage yet, let me do encourage while I'm at it, as we get further and further along, things are gonna become more and more complicated, I mean, this one looks like it's screaming, but it doesn't have the same aesthetic as the rest of these, what, what would be the best encourage token, strength? Yeah, sure. We'll use the strength. For the dodge, I chose evasion just because evasion and dodge, you know, but I could have chosen. Aww. The, the movement one. Okay, I'll move this down. Let's scale this up. Yo, is this EO music? Hold up, I need to know. This is... Mmm, I love Veteran Odyssey music so much. One more. Yeah, I think that's as big as the rest of these. Can't lock them in place, but that's okay. These are gonna help remind me as to who has done what for a turn. This way I don't... Did I just... I swear I saw this move. For a second, it doesn't seem to be. Maybe I'm crazy. Alright, one more. And once I have these, I won't have to recreate them as we move further on the persistent campaign, so that's nice. And I'll add I'll add the dodge one later, because we don't have that at the moment. Okay, so we now have token reminders for everything that I have done for the round, and I think we're ready to go. So we're taking, I didn't mention it, we're taking Gordon, I might have mentioned it, instead of Zane. But I want to always bring a, a new person so that, you know, the main grind squad here gets completely murked by bullshit. We're not set too far back. Now normally I wouldn't take out a squad like this over and over and over again. I, I would at the beginning, but we're like grinding a Twilight Sword just because then we're grinding Fist and Tooth, which I really want to master as soon as I can. So yeah, let's get this hunt started. White Lion level 1. Uh, left to right as always, so Lena is the first revealer and then Abel, Gordon, Tiki. We have some marked territory. I have looked for this card for so long and we don't need it anymore. Alright, we know that there's piss in the area. Roll random hunt event. Let's go, guys. Oh yes, yeah, so there's something I want to mention while I'm going through this book right now. This uploaded book is not 100% Authentic version 1.5, I have come to discover. 
<laughs> but it's mostly version 1.5 and for anything that seems weird I actually I can display it for you guys but I have a PDF of the actual 1.5 which I do need to we need to add this anyway let me add a I guess it would be a window capture source Alright, hold up. Boosh! Yeah, this will work. So I actually have a PDF of the official 1.5. And now one thing I wanted to point out before we get started. Let me just get 28 up. I don't mean to do this distraction now, but I should talk about it. So, the big thing that was a huge eye raiser for me, I had to ask my friend who has the actual copy of our game, because we all pitched in together, and he verified that intimacy in 1.5 is slightly different. You are only allowed to have one savior child at a time. Now, this is the old Intimacy page. They did not update this in the mod. I don't know if they just didn't realize it changed, so they didn't bother to, but this is actually different. Hold on, you guys can't see what I'm talking about. This, this page here, this page was not updated in the tabletop mod. Now, on the PDF, if we peruse here, and I don't know what page number these are off the top of my hand, so we just gotta like scroll real fast. There it is. Well, that's Birth of a Savior. We need to find just New Life. Never realized how messy the book is, too. <laughs> like, events are just in random locations. Intimacy. Okay, let's zoom in on this, right? Here's the actual 1.5 Intimacy page. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. So, if the settlement innovated Havel and they do not already have a savior, this clause was added. And this is one of the discrepancies that I found out about. And I had to double check and make sure. And you can see that clause is not here. So if I ever see anything that I think is strange or weird, I have a PDF now that I can reference and we can look at it together, basically. And let me just move this thing. Alright. Cool. So I just want to point that out. The reason why I like started looking into this uploaded book to make sure it's authentic is because it also doesn't have the fixed priority target rules, like we checked the other day when I had that problem. This glossary is the old glossary, I'm pretty sure. So now we have the new glossary to look into. Anyway, I rolled 12 for 28. So 8 rump... what is that? Rumpted? Rumpled? Rumpled. Unsightly bird stands in our path. And his beady wet eyes blink expectantly and he calls out with an eerie human chuckle. We may archive one consumable item or gear offering it to the troll bird. If anyone is insane, they must feed the troll bird if able. If they feed the troll bird, it hops off with a terrible cackle. If we don't feed the troll bird, it would follow us and... Do stuff. <laughs> I like the ending, these home events are so strange. But anyway, we have an insane person, so let's check. Lena is insane, but she does not have any consumables. So, she will not make an offering. Abel is absolutely insane, and before we continue... I almost forgot about that. I am absolutely herb gathering. I'm gonna put the herb gathering here and hope the lion doesn't come closer. Normally he doesn't. That's what I would have done. And we'll talk about the rules for that in a minute. We get herb gathering because of the bone sickle. As I was, no consumables. 
No problem. Gordon, not insane, does not have to feed the bird his monster grease. And then Tiki, who is insane, does not have consumables. So we don't have to feed the bird. So if we don't feed the troll bird, he's gonna follow us on our hunt. Constantly mocking us with his chuckle. Roll 1d10. If anyone had Coprolalia, they curse at the bird and make vigorous and vulgar gestures. No, I don't think anyone has Coprolalia. I don't actually know how to pronounce that word <laughs> correctly. Have to hear it. Oh yeah, I never named that new kid. Right, I got stuff to do. <laughs> See, it's been a while. I took a break at the end of the last one. Let's make a roll. We're not feeding the bird. All right, good roll. There were two. Troll bird makes a terrible racket, alerting the monster. All survivors gain plus one understanding. At the start of the showdown, the monster ambushes us. That's not that bad. Just the white lion. So he'll get to go twice. We all gain one understanding. All right, and I should mark this down. I still haven't brought back my fucking reroll token. I swear, I'm gonna get stuff. I don't know if I want to use the proxy card for this. What would be a good, um... Just use the lunacy token. All right, monster ambush. I'm gonna call it plus one in case we get an ambush effect that cancels this out. Okay, so monster's gonna ambush us. Old bird's gonna troll. Marked territory's been marked. Let's move on, a bell. There's a prowling lion. He's hunting something else. Look at that, he starts with ground fighting in play. That's probably the best thing we could have hoped for. Alright, so I'm going to leave that to the side. Now, Gordon is the event revealer for this. So, the rules say when there is more than one hunt event on a space, you can actually choose the order in which to resolve them. So we're going to do the random hunt event first, and then herb gathering. Second. So let's do the rando. The 34. Crippling Misery. Everyone rolls 1d10 and the lowest scoring survivor becomes a straggler. And if anyone has anxiety, they are a straggler. Alright, no one has anxiety. But this guy is prepared, so he gets a plus 2 to his result. Let's... Whoa, that was weird. Set up the dice. Set up the dice. So, you know, usual. Left to right. I'll just put it over here. Alright, so this is actually an 8. These two are tied for the straggler. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so they're both the straggler. As they tie. So the stragglers are lost in a moment of profound self-doubt. They slip, not having the will to catch themselves, and stumble off a steep hill of stone faces, and land awkwardly with a crunch, suffering broken legs, severe injury. Sobbing to themselves, they come to grips with just how terrible their life is, <laughs> and gain plus one understanding. Okay, so they both just broke their leg for no reason. What, what a bunch of dorks. Hold on. I'm not gonna re-roll this result for one of them. Broken leg. I'll check broken leg uh, in the book in a minute. So that was the last two. That'll be one understanding and a broken leg. We'll see what that entails. I think they're losing movement speed or something plus one understanding tiki gains explorer let me get that ability out dun, dun, dun. i love sharing the wanderer music and this is perfect adventuring music right now 
Move these to the side. That's over. I'm gonna roll for Tiki's insight. Uh, after we're done with this event, I'll do it. Okay, so we broke our leg. Let me get it on this book. Your injuries. Legs. Broken leg. Ear shattering crunch. Adjacent surf. Alright, that won't happen. No one would be adjacent, I assume. We're not on the board. Suffer one minus one permanent move movement and gain one bleeding token. So they do gain the bleeding tokens on the hunt phase. And minus one permanent movement. Oh, Gordon! He earned his permanent movement from the fucking triathlon. And Tiki's is from the boots at the moment. That's hilarious. This Kingdom Death is ironic sometimes. <laughs> so only Tiki's really bothered by that. Gordon's like, mm, not quite as spry as I was at that triathlon anymore. Okay, so that was the broken leg. Anyway. If the straggler has binge eating disorder, they wipe away their tears and reach out to a nearby critter, instinctually cramming it into their mouth for comfort. Draw one random vermin resource and consume it. Oh my god. That could get them killed. Or buffed. But none of them have binge eating disorder. Okay, so that hunt event sucked. Maybe we'll get some nicer things. We are now herb gathering. Everyone's gonna eat some herbs and berries and gain one survival, which I actually need to verify if... Uh, I think that's still the way it is. I don't, that wouldn't be in the book, actually. Okay, here's the herb gathering. Yeah, that would just be on the card. We're gonna have to play with this card as it is and hope it's current. But we all gain one survival. I think we're all at max. Couldn't spend survival to prevent the breaking of our leg. And let's do some herbs gathering special event. I guess it's triggered? It is triggered. Each survivor must make a special gathering roll. This should be current up to date. I don't think you ever face this Mandragora thing that is terrorizing all these survivors. Anyway, to make a gathering roll, a survivor nominates any number of d10s and then rolls them in case you aren't aware. If any of them tie, then the score becomes zero. Otherwise, you add all those scores up to make a final score and consult this table right here. So we're going to do that. Uh, if we were past Overwhelming Darkness, you get plus 10 to this chart. So, for... Oh boy, I'm gonna need extra dice, I suppose, for this. I'm gonna do... Let's see how I do with four dice on the first person, and then let me copy these over. So this is... for Lena. Alright, we have two ones, so she scored a zero. I'm gonna do four dice again. For the second person. I need to be more careful when I'm moving stuff. Doesn't matter for her. Alright, this is a 20. Do four dice for the third person. Alright, they scored a zero, and now I'm gonna yellow five dice for the last person. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get five different numbers here. Uh, four, eight, no, two fours. Okay, so we scored a 20 this time around. 12 to 44, gain a fresh camp, a strange resource, and all survivors gain one survival. Alright, not bad. Get a fresh acanthus, which is what we kind of want to grind a little bit. Alright, and that was a bell who actually scored that. Let me delete these excess of dice and move these back. Good herb gathering event. Oh, this goes back here. Tiki! Random hunt event. Probably the last one. 27. Those hunt events. Alright, man, stewers! Oh boy. Gonna. 
Take a break, rest, and during our sleep, a small insect approaches undetected. Choose one random male survivor and roll on the table. If there are no male survivors, then nothing happens. I'll read further afterwards. So, who's a boy? Lean is a girl. Labelle's a boy. Gordon's a boy. Kiki's a girl. So, 50 50, we'll do evens, odds, left or right. I would just give this to Gordon straight up, but it don't matter. The three, it's odds, so it is for Gordon. Gordon's having a bad day. He broke his leg. Uh, if he has unconscious fighter, he crushes the bug while still snoring. Do not roll on the table. And then he wakes confused with a random vermin resource in his hand. Alright, he's not an unconscious fighter. Nobody is an unconscious fighter. So, roll on the table for Gordon. A seven. Six plus. You wake with a start, terrified to find menacing pincers approaching. Your defenses are quick. Without thinking, you wallop the insect crawling on your pants, suffering one event damage to the waist. He, ke he keeps his penis, guys. He keeps his penis. Gordon will be able to procreate today. Alright. And then we meet up with the lions. So, another kingdom death hunt. Come and gone. The lion is ambushing us, but this doesn't even fucking matter because he is ground fighting. Which is hilarious. Alright, let's just move us here. Get the white lion set up. Not that I need it. But we'll just have it there. What does I want to do? I want to do this. Who's gonna give us some white fur? So we can go after antelopes. Alright, four tall grass. That's a lot of tall grass. This lion is... We caught him in the golden sea of grass. It's like that one hunt event. And uh, that kind of sucks because I get to farm for free, but we can't really farm for free. Oh, for anyone who may be wondering, I did make a pickaxe. We're keeping it in storage for now. Gonna farm pickaxe stuff when I can go all in on grinding iron. Uh, one, four, five. Peaks. You know what? I don't think this matters. Why don't we put a grass right behind him? We'll just have him face this way. One, two, three, four. Put a grass over here. Two, three, four. Put a grass over here. We'll just get some random spattering of grass. Let me offset this one. It's more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> this is not competitive in the least, but we always have some grass to hide in. This can actually be closer. Alright, ore vein. There are at least six spaces away from everything else. I'm just gonna put it in like three, four, five, six. This is where we start. One, two, four, five, six. Yeah, it can be right behind where we start. Funnily enough, that worked out great. Okay, let me get a drink. Take a sip of my drink. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs> Alright, white lion. Six and eight. Basic stuff. Seven and three. Shuffle that. Shuffle these. One, one, two, two, three. I don't know what I'm doing that. I'm just taking from the top anyway. Mix them together and you got yourself a monster deck. I, I fucked up again. Alright. Need to get ground fighting first and then build the decks technically. Okay, whatever. He's got his deck. Let's lock the grass. Oh yeah, right. I'm, uh... I'm forgetting myself. I forgot we have 3D terrain. Excuse me? Copied the grass, I know no idea. Alright, uh, we can just delete the tall grass here. Bit of a uh, reposition this stuff. Okay, well. Got two of them. 
Uh, this one was right behind him. And then this one was like over here somewhere. That's fine. Set up. We'll just do, uh, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just put Lena over here. We'll have a bell next to her. We'll put Gordon here. And Tiki next to him. Yeah, that works out perfectly because the synchronized striking stuff. Do I have a bone dart? And the other thing I can do is bandage. Oh, but these two. Bell and Lena have the bandages. All right, we'll walk him around. This this will work perfectly. Switch. We'll keep Tiki here. Switch Gordon with a bell. There you go. Masterful tactic. Okay, let's begin our new showdown. Lion ambushes us. So the first round, he just sits there and doesn't draw AI. We skip our turn, and then on the lion's next turn. Same fucking thing happens, but we get our turn. Okay, wonderful ambush, lion. Way the ground fight. We're going to have Lena bandage Gordon. We may as well. And then we'll have a bell bandage Tiki. Uh, when Lena bandages Gordon, three, four, five, we'll have her move here. And when a bell bandages Tiki, we'll have him move here. And then Gordon, who's got the ranged weapon? Counterweighted axe. Gordon will just move up here. Tiki will walk down, run, and mine the orbing. A pretty simple turn. I got a three. We found nothing. I hope I can grind this lion. I didn't take out the 3D or either. Oh well. It came, it went. We'll go to the next round. We're going to, uh... One, two, three, four, five. Move Tiki there, move a bell here, end their turn, go to the next round. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself too. On arrival! I'm sorry. I'm always in such a rush. On arrival stuff. We have a rhythm chaser. Most of us are rhythm chasers. I'll chase that rhythm. All right, rhythm chaser and rhythm chaser. Let me just do this one at a time. Rhythm chaser. Are you rhythm chaser? You are not. Okay, that's rhythm chaser. Now, red fist. Red fist. Red fist. Red fist. Okay. And then. Plus one survival for the harp. The lion harp. No one needs the lion harp survival. Okay. Anything else on you on arrival? No. Anything else on you on arrival? There is. An insanity for that. No. Anything for you? No. And anything for you? Don't think so. One insanity, actually. Okay, there. We're all called up. Let's say I did that first, and then we, we got into the thick of it. <laughs> I'm just so quick about going through the motions of a white lion fight, you know? So, I moved these two out of the way, ended their turn. We're gonna now have Gordon start things off with the King's Yeah. So we have, let me just check here, two dice wounds on a crazy high number, hits on a six, he is one away from the zone of death. Spear poke up the butt. We have two hits. I actually should not have used Gordon for this because I just realized he doesn't even need to attack. It's too late now. Fleshy gut and scapular deltoid. I'll do the fleshy gut first. Alright, that's only a two. Two and three is five, plus three is six, seven, eight. So we actually do wound on a two. We only fail on a one. No failure. Ugh. 
second location. That's a nine. We don't have a lock, so we don't crit. We just do another wound and no reaction because no failure. All right, ground fighting was discarded with the first wound, and now everyone can do their normal spiel. So we're going to have a bell go next. Uh, you know what? We'll have a bell go after. Let's have Tiki go next. Two, three. And Tiki will abstain from attacking for now. I'm gonna have Lena go next, and Lena will synchronize the strike. The line up the butt. We're still, we're not cumbersome. We're slow though. Yeah, so Twilight Swords. One dice hits on. Hold up, it's nine, eight, seven. Six for blind spot, five for synchronized strike. Let me read this again. So, just a question for you guys, because I actually don't know. Uh, synchronized strike. It says once per round, right? Is it the individual? So, like, can Lena do it and Tiki do it? Once per round each, because, you know, it's their individual ability. Or is it saying once per round you can synchronize strike, period? Since, you know, you and your attack assist are going in sync with their attack, you know? Thematically. If, if I'm to interpret the card as it is... I think they can each do it once per round. No, that might not be right though, because once per round... I don't know if the once per round is to stop you from doing it multiple times. I'm gonna need to look that up. Let me not worry about it for now. Let's roll this dice. For Lena. And I might look it up. So we got a six. We do get a hit. With our weapon. It's a sturdy knee. We get a seven. We absolutely wound. We do not crit. So we get a wound and that means we will have... Weapon proficiency at the end of the fight. Okay. I am curious about the synchronized strike issue. I'm gonna look it up after. For the time being, I'm gonna say I can only do it with one character. Because it says once per round. I never bothered to think about that before. I'm pretty sure I did synchronize strike with both in the past. But uh, now, now I'm thinking about it. I don't know if that's correct. Or I'm gonna have to see what other people's interpretations are for that. We're gonna fist and tooth with the bell. All right, no accuracy problem. So we hit on a seven, and we get plus three to wound. Hmm, it's a little laggy today. We have the Glorious Mane! Well, let's see if I can crit this bad boy. That's an 8. Alright. Uh, 8 is not a crit for us. We crit on a 9 because we don't have the luck. So, no Glorious Mane. No frustration and rage. That will end our turn. Let's go to the next round and the White Lion will do White Lion things. Such as Grasp. The closest knockdown survivor is nobody. The closest survivor in range is a three-way tie. Uh, and then 
I need to figure out. So he's next to Tiki, Lena, and Abel. Abel is the weakest, so I believe the lion will go after Abel. So we're going to turn to face target and attack Abel. Even though he's the weakest, he's actually in the grass. Hold on. Yeah, right now Bell has plus four evasion for being in the grass. Um, Tiki only has one evasion. So even though Tiki, uh, see, I don't know who would be the target. Tiki's easier to hit. I'm gonna go after Tiki. It's easier to do damage to her than to uh, do damage to a Bell. That's one dice. It's on the two plus. That's a hit. And then Tiki, I'll probably just dodge that. Death location. Got some gangster music playing at the moment. Body. I will dodge. There's no reason not to dodge, so dodge. Spend that survival. And yeah. I think that's about all I need to worry about. I need to keep that in mind. So, nothing happens. The radio seems to have stopped all of a sudden. There we go. I don't know why that occurred. It is our move. Let me think here. Abel caused the wound with his... No, he didn't. Abel did not cause the wound. Right. Alright, so Lena... will be fist and tooth and Gordon does not need to wound. He doesn't have proficiency. But he has axe proficiency. I didn't pay attention to that. Right, because of the butcher. Alright, Tiki. Tiki... We need Tiki to wound, and Synchronized Strike is reactive. So I'm just gonna have Tiki... Tell you what, we're gonna have Lena go first. Lena's going to Fist and Tooth with Synchronized Strike. Don't need to use the sword anymore. Uh, I'm just making sure she doesn't have any problems. She crits on an 8. We have a perfect hit. We are a combo master. That is another hit. Not perfect, though. Uh, okay, so two hits. Six does not... Does the six hit? It's eight, seven, and blast... Uh, six does hit. It's actually three hits. Three opportunities to farm. Alright, we'll do this last. And we'll do the fuzzy groin first, so let's roll the crit this That is a natural crit. Cause a wound. We get lion testes as usual. I guess it's good for thinning the deck. And we are permanently the priority target. Lena will forever be targeted. No exceptions. Does this card get... Persistent injury, right? It gets put over there. Okay. Beast's back. Lena, Lena was fondling that lion's balls. Now she's fondling that lion's back. Got a minus one accuracy token with another crit and another wound. And no reaction. Can we crit this one? Probably not, right? Yeah, no crit. Five and three is eight. We will do a wound. But uh, the reflex will trigger. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The lion is here. Tiki is here. And she is getting one damage to her body. And she is dragged by the lion. Okay. That was this. We're gonna have Lena just, uh... Stay 
already put, I suppose. Bell needs to cause a wound and Tiki needs to cause a wound. Alright, I'm gonna have... Can't spend a survival. We're gonna have Gordon encourage. So, let's encourage a roll for rawhide armor. We do not get the benefit of rawhide armor. I will pick up Tiki. And then we're going to have Tiki, one, two, three, four, over here in the corner, we'll use the counterweighted axe. Dun 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 dun, that is two hits. Dun 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 dun. Alright, I could sing this tune. <laughs> Fucking Castlevania music, so good. I'll do it in this order. So, we roll an eight. Oh yeah, I rolled a nine. Hold on. I don't have time to sign. We're fine. Everything is Daijoku. We have a wound on the leg, which means we will gain our uh, weapon proficiency. And second location. We have a wound on here, the beast ribs. We do have three plus understanding, so we may gain one survival. As it is very encouraging hearing the beast's ribs crack. Okay. So, she's done... I Maybe I should have waited to see if this line had lick wounds. Hold on a second. Alright, everything's fine. I'm gonna have a bell wait, so the lion's gonna probably come back to Lena. I should look for Lick Wounds before I go crazy on this lion, so I can actually grind it harder. Because we just decimated this thing. Oh well, we're too powerful for a level 1. I'm just thinking... I'll just end my turn. We'll stay in the grass. We'll have a bell hide in the grass. It doesn't really matter, but we can do that. Gordon will hide in the grass, too. Actually, you know what? We're gonna have Gordon... Two, three, four, five. Let we'll Gordon go over there. Not hide in the grass. And then we'll end our turn. So it's a new round. Get those back. And the White Lion will do revenge. Pick target, priority target. So he's gonna go after Lena. Move forward six. And then two dice hits on threes because of the minus one accuracy. Plus we're in grass. Plus we have three evasion. My goodness. Alright, so, that's four, five, three, and five, so it hits on eight. Lion's really gotta work for this. He has no hits. He has no chance. Okay, so that was that. We're gonna have a bell go. One, two, three, four, five. Fist and tooth up the butt. Alright, one hit. That's all we need. One hit. And roll the wound. We do get a critical wound. Torn muscle causes agonizing pain. The white lion's knocked down and he would lose a mood if he had a mood. And then we got our final guy, Proficiency. I should have changed Gordon the Spear at the beginning. He didn't have to say Axe, but that's alright. Not a big deal. I need to, like, spend a good 20 minutes re-familiarizing myself with my current campaign. We can do this later, though. I'm gonna move Tiki for over here, just to chill. End of turn, and then we'll synchronize strike with Alina. Just for the damage bonus, I guess. 
Uh, two dice, man, two dice. Gotta earn that extra hit. We actually just critically failed. Okay. So, we'll end our turn. Lena's gonna do the rest of the wounds here. Lion gets up! Uh, I think I shuffled this. Lion's ground fighting. You know what, I'm going to actually activate ground fighting the hard way because I'm stubborn. Lena will attack. And when Lena attacks, the white lion will ground fight. So before resolving the basic action, well just the action, he will attack us with a basic action at plus two speed and plus one damage. So right now, this is a 3 damage attack of the lion. <laughs> 4 dice. Uh, he has 1 hit, so that'll be 3 damage to Lena's brain, which we can't dodge. I'm okay with this. <laughs> Alright, and now we get our attack. 3 damage to the brain because we're immortal. In case anyone doesn't know what happened there. Alright, we have a 6. We do not hit on a 6 because I'm not in the damn blind spot. Hit on a 7. Alright, that's fine. Let's not do that again now. That, that shit hurts. We'll back Tiki up. Tiki can attack. Counterweighted axe. And Tiki missed with the counterweighted axe, so that's great. We'll have Gordon go up. Gordon will attack. King's Spear. Gordon will get one hit onto the Beast's Temple. And four and three is seven, plus three is... Oh yeah, we wound on twos. So that's a wound. This gets discarded. I don't really want to deal with uh, ground fighting again, so a bell. We'll just have him fist and tooth and go for another wound. I did a really bad job at trying to form the lion here. We missed anyway, so we're gonna have to deal with ground fighting. Oh, I can strum on the heart. I didn't think about this at all. Can you tell I've been away for a while? <laughs> Very rusty. Alright, we'll let the white line go. Little ground fight. It's the last card he has. Let's let's reposition here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I'll hide in the grass with the bell. Actually I won't hide in the grass. We'll hide in the grass with Gordon. We'll end our turn. We're just gonna end our turn, alright? Then we move Tiki here. We'll end our turn again. Okay. This is so I can synchronize strike. Now I'll strum on the harp with a bell. And we're gonna do this until we get it. I forgot I can do this. So we'll strum on the harp with a bell. And we got an eight. Okay, so the mood is gone. Cool. Now we synchronize strike with Lena. That's two perfect hits, combo master. Alright, two misses. So only two hits. We only need two hits to kill him, I guess. Just wanted some resources. I, I did not. We could have grinded him so much more. I'll do the chest first to discard this if I fail. See if I fail that. That is a four. Four and three is seven plus one for synchronized strike. So that is a wound. No failure. No resource. And then the final location is a three. That's a failure. Uh, we do not wound. 
We already have priority target. Alright, I'll just end my turn. The lion will basic action targeting Lena. He is livid. Bonnet at three. Plus evasion. Which we have three, so he hits on sixes. It's one hit. I'm not gonna roll that. It's two damage to the brain. That we cannot dodge, because we are immortal. Alright. Uh, I can't, like, keep flip-flopping these people. I'm just gonna have Lena synchronize strike, and hopefully we get the hit with the fist and teeth. That is the perfect hit, combo master. Alright, two hits. Do this location first. Ah, oh, almost a crit. Four, four and four will wound. Or four and three plus one for synchronized strike. So we kill the lion. I should have tried harder to like grind him out. Does he have lick wounds? I'm just curious. The first thing I should do is see if he has lick wounds so I can grind him. He actually didn't this time, so it didn't matter. And then I should pay attention to the fact I have a fucking lion heart. I completely forgot that I have a lion heart. <laughs> Let's hope I can get a white fur. White lion fights. I mean, I'll fight a level 2 white lion if I can get the, uh... Well, we got the cat eye circlet. Maybe I'll try a level 2 white lion. It'll be a big risk, but... It might be worth the effort. We do not have a finished White Lion set yet. Um, this is not enough resources at this point. It's a little chintzy. If I can get Dash, then the level 2 White Lion will definitely move on to. If I can get Dash. Alright, that's our resources. We got a Lion Testes and a Fresh Canthus from this hunt. Not great and things. I guess it's okay. Let me uh, get the guys out of here and Tiki. They hide in the grass pretty well. In the 3D grass. Put two of these in here and then I'll just delete the other two. Very target token back here and yeah. Pack up the way lion. Another easy level one hunt, no problem. All right, we gain hunt XP and we are a specialist of the Twilight Sword, except you're always a specialist of the Twilight Sword. We're just level three now, which doesn't do anything. A bell. Three away from achieving what we want in every campaign. Gordon. Needs to skip the next hunt because he is post-traumatically stressed. And he does not participate in any endeavors. But he gets us to tinker. And... Oh yeah, I forgot to do something. I need to fix some things. Man, this is just such a rusty campaign. First thing I forgot to do... She, Tiki, Tiki's Epiphany. Alright, we got a one. I don't know what it would have been, but never did her damn Epiphany. One phase triumph. Gain one speed token for the next showdown. Alright, that would have changed things, so you know what I'm gonna have to do? It's a negative cheat, but it's a cheat, so we've cheated two times. Cheated ourselves, basically. <laughs> That's, uh, the game doesn't care. We should have been swinging three dice. Instead of two. Anyway, that's that's a small thing. I completely forgot about that. Epiphany event. An 18 milestone. When we do the next uh, the next video, I will definitely turn things down again. You know, there's a lot of information to keep track of, and I gotta be gotta be on top of everything. You know, gotta be on top of this. What do we get? accuracy 
permanent accuracy to go with our broken leg. Okay, just making sure that registered. So that was Gordon and then Tiki. On XP and X proficiency. Okay, cool. We gain. Let's see, she is not a tinker. This is a tinker. We have three tinkers, so that will be seven endeavors. Four for the survivors, three for the tinkers. And we have out of that one matchmaker in this party. Okay. So we can try and make some more kiddos. Here we are, settlement event for the year. We have clinging mist. Settlement is hidden behind a thick green mist. Something about the way the lantern light passes through it makes it seem alive. Oh, clinging mist. Determine my fate. It's a 10. Do we have guideposts? No. Returning survivors must go on another hunt immediately without departing or changing gear grids or become the starting survivors for a new settlement. Starting with the first story settlement phase. So this is the... This is the opportunity to start a new game. A lot of people like this opportunity. <laughs> A new hunt immediately. I'm willing to do this. So, I'm gonna do this because I don't want to start a new campaign <laughs> yet. This one's going just fine. Another hunt immediately. That gives us a chance to grind up another uh, white lion. So they just, they don't depart, they don't gain any departing stuff, or change their gear grids. Or become the starting survivors for a new self. I would make that an achievement if we uh, did that, I think. But yeah, we're gonna do another hunt. Here's, here's just the one thing, I'm gonna do it right now. All in one video, because we got this result. Let's get another lion. That's pretty great. This stuff, I think, is deposited in the, uh... <sighs> oh shit, this stuff doesn't get refreshed, does it? Alright, I have a lot of questions. Here's the deal, we're gonna do this. Like I said, I just gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> I'll actually put on my streaming break screen for this recording. I didn't expect a roll result like that, but we got a second hunt coming. Just give me like a few minutes. Or you get, this will be on YouTube. Skip ahead, please. I don't have good video editing software. Like all the professionals. This is what I do. This is budget life.
All right, I'm back. I am back. Thinking this is uh, quite an opportunity, honestly. <sighs> okay, let me look at this card again, just to make sure. We must go on another hunt immediately. Without departing or changing gear grids. Or we become the starting survivors for a new settlement. Starting with the first story settlement phase. If you take the opportunity to start a new settlement, I think you don't have any of your gear. It's just that you have the survivors, their abilities, and their stats. Although we would instantaneously lose the benefits of our life principle. Can be a really good thing if you just want to start over. But we're gonna use it as a good opportunity to grind, so we're getting another lion hunt. Another level one white lion, because I do not have dash. Now the thing I need to check, which I can actually check in the PDF, just give me a minute to uh, get to a hunt phase. I want to know if those resources get put back into the deck. The white lion resources do, but I don't know what the basic resources do. Actually, the white lion resources might, I might have to take them back out. Yeah. Uh, that would be a settlement phase thing. What would this count as? It's not a special showdown. Does this count as a special? This is like its own unique thing. I've actually never rolled this before. I'm clinging miss. I almost always roll four to seven. interpret this. Alright, so here's my line of thinking at the moment. Feel free to correct me if I am incorrect. This just says we immediately go on another hunt and without departing or changing gear grids, right? This means we will be returning survivors again. I need to see returning survivors rules but the the first thing i want to address all right step 10 of the rules let me bring it up so you guys can see what i'm looking at i'm not just spacing out here step 10 right there is to record and archive resources since we are going out on another hunt are we not ending our settlement phase which would mean i would lose unspent endeavors I don't know how this works. <laughs> I don't want to lose my endeavors. It would make sense if you lose your endeavors, I guess. Must go on another hunt immediately. Let me Google it. See what other people say. Clinging mist. Kingdom death. Uh... 
Alright, the official response on Clinging Mist is that you do keep your gear and resources you got on the last hunt. You never actually return to the settlement, this is why you either hunt or start a new settlement. Okay, we never actually return to the settlement, apparently. Let me read this thread. This will be a good read. Because there is some conflicting rules at the moment. I'm doing a lot of reading. Enjoy the music. <laughs> Fucking clinging mist, man, extending this video. I definitely want to do a hunt, not go back. I'm just trying to interpret... Interpret... What does that mean? Here's, here's my questions. Question one. Do I lose these endeavors or are they going to stack? Question two. Is the settlement phase ending, i.e. is this stuff in storage or is this stuff on our person still? Are we going back out? The way people word it, it makes it sound like you never made it back to the settlement. The only problem is you have to get to the settlement in order to get to this fucking step. Unless returning survivors technically... No, it says step two, we return. So yeah, we became returning survivors. I'm trying to play this as Poots wants me to, you know? Trying to do this authentically as I fucking can. Let me look at some glossary page notes in the 1.5 glossary. Because I am confused. Right, so the first question is do I keep the second question? Do these go in storage and we like, do the decks refresh, or do they stay with us, the decks don't refresh? Obviously, we're keeping the resources, and it's gonna stack up as a second hunt. Like a boon. The thing I understand is we keep our survivors as they are, they keep their gear grids, they keep their wounds, we don't depart. We don't heal. So we don't gain departing bonuses, but we will gain on arrival bonuses and shit. I'm just trying to, you know, I need to figure out what all is actually going down. Alright, I'm in the glossary now. I need to look up a couple things here. I guess returning survivors should be the first thing I look at. <clears throat> Alright, it just says all survivors that endured the previous showdown are returning a survivor. Okay. Ay 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 ay. Let me uh you guys can see me scrolling on this. Let me look at the end game stuff. Couple things I want to bring up. It might be a little faster to search here.
This is the old one too. This doesn't have the special showdown added. Alright, we have to stick with the PDF for sure. It's a little harder to navigate the PDF at all. Uh. All right, survivors return. All survivors that endured the previous showdown are returning survivors. Let me show you guys one. Read in the top left here. When they return to settlement, their injuries are healed. Okay. I'm gonna follow this by the book. Right. So, injuries would have been healed before this happens. In the reaches of space, below the they would have been healed. I didn't hit that button. So, we actually are healed. Alright. We actually are healed. Okay. So, that's the first thing that happened. Alright, yeah, that's stuff. Permanent injuries do not heal on their own, yeah, yeah. Why any effects for the returning survivors from principal slow events and innovations, this may include bonuses and penalties. Yep. Possible to have no returning survivors, all survivors perish. Yep. Got our endeavors. Alright, and now we update the timeline. Okay, hold on. Technically, it's Lantern Year 8 when this happens. According to rules 1.5 rules. So, fill in the next one, fill Lantern Year and time and advance current lane. You draw a top card of some event deck performance rules for the current play area as a reminder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Current effects and endeavors. Okay. Trigger timeline events afterwards. So I think we wouldn't trigger the timeline events yet because we're still doing the clinging mist. So we have to finish clinging mist first. So this is where clinging mist happens, which means we would not have updated the death count. And we are going on an immediate hunt right now. Let me uh go to the main kingdom death monster website. And see if the FAQ on there covers clinging mess. Wills. FAQ Settlement Clinging Mist, 8, 9, 10 result. What happens if you're on 8 plus and you don't have guideposts or any returning survivors? Nothing would happen in the result keys to returning survivors. Nothing happens if there's no returning survivors. What happens if there are less than 4 returning survivors or if one or more returning survivors must skip the next hunt? No survivors from the settlement may join them on their extra hunt. Any survivors with their skip the next hunt box filled in, go on this hunt and skip the next one. Okay, so that answers one question about Gordon, because Gordon did have to skip a hunt. So he is going on this fight and then skipping the next one. The returning survivors have a chance to heal injuries and change their gear goods before departing again. Alright, the answer for this is no. We don't have a chance to heal injuries, but I don't know if that is just saying do we have a chance to, like, 
use endeavors to heal and stuff. Because according to the PDF, which we can see right here, we already heal our injuries on step two. So I'm gonna play that way. I'm gonna assume, let me show you guys the FAQ too. We need to figure this out together. I wanna, <laughs> anyone with insight on how they play Clinging Mitts, comment on the video. Hold on, we're gonna get the other. Look at the Firefox. Alright, here's the Firefox, right? So, Clinging Mist FAQ. You can see right there it says that. Uh, this one. Do we get a chance to heal injuries or change our gear grids before departing again? No. I think we heal our injuries, but this just might mean like a chance to recover anything else. Because it doesn't make any sense in the ordering, and I'm gonna play by the rule book, you know? And what happens to the settlement's endeavors when they go on an extra hunt? They are lost. Okay, that answers that question there. I have additional questions, like are the resources still in our inventory or what? All right, you know, or we know the endeavors are lost. I'm gonna delete the endeavors. So this is about as official as it gets. Let me turn off the window capture here. I'm gonna keep reading that thread for a little bit. And I think we're gonna play it basically this way now. And apparently resources are carried by the survivors until step 9 when you archive them and add them to storage. Keep everything you had on your last hunt so you keep all those resources. Pretty nice. Okay, and then endeavors are all gone. Hmm, apparently. According to these interpretations, a lot of people claim they got official responses. And I'm gonna have to take their word for it, right? Won't be able to question it. I'm still reading it. There's some contradictory information here. When you have a bunch of people trying to interpret the intent of something, of course contradictory information comes up, especially when these people seem to be using rule 1.4 instead of 5. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Let me uh minimize this. Sorry for this delay. I want to get it right. And I told you guys I was just going to slow down and try and get things right because we did that hunt pretty quick. There is one more thing I need to back. All right, here's how we're gonna play this. We are going on another hunt, obviously, with a white line. I already have that set up. We do heal our injuries because that had to happen first, according to 1.5 rules right here. So we returned, this happened, so we healed our injuries and stuff. We got endeavors. We're going to lose the endeavors though because we're going on another hunt. Uh, we're ending the settlement phase basically to immediately do this extra hunt. We're just not. All they have to do is in 1.5 add in the text, count this as a special showdown. Uh, anyway. We're gonna lose the endeavors. All these resources we got, I don't remember who was carrying what. You're allowed to freely trade between each other though, but these are technically in our. I think we got this, yeah. What we got. These four, these four, and then I cut off his deck. These are on our person. They do not get storaged because we're not entering the storage step. We're just gonna let fucking Gordon carry all of it. Yeah, sure, why not? Hold on, he absorbed the card. <laughs> he absorbed Matchmaker. Okay, so we're doing this. We can't change our gear grids, right? We don't depart, so we gain no departing benefits. Or negative things for departing and then we're just gonna we're gonna do the hunt and this is how i'm gonna interpret it so you lose endeavors because you know they're unspent and we're going on the hunt phase so they don't stack the decks don't refresh because we're not hitting the we're not technically hitting the end of the settlement phase we're just immediately doing another hunt since it got lost so these decks that means this white lion deck i have the test the I need to see what all I got. We got the testes. We got great cat bone. We got a claw. We got the eye. And we got sinew. Okay. So these are. I'm just gonna leave them off to the side here, like this. The decks never refresh. And that's how I'm gonna play this. Okay. We'll just trade everything to him. But we have our sickle benefit, so I'll put herb gathering here. And are you guys ready for round two? That took a while to figure out, I apologize. But like, there's a lot to figure out with that. Anyway, scratching grounds. We may investigate and gain a courage. I will have everybody investigate and gain a courage. Why not? The bell finally back at three courage. He's already had his benefit before. All right, let's see if we can get some additional claws out of this fucking clinging mist, man. All right, four, three, five, eight. So we have. Four, three, five, eight. Nothing happens. The three takes one event damage to the arms because they suck. That's a bell. Light wound to the arms. Alright. Easy event. Alright, that's all we do. Okay. Next event. White Lion Cub. Oh, baby. The Cub. I'm going to murder the Cub. Why not? <laughs> 
Each survivor gains one random basic resource. This this pathetic farm is just turned into a really great farm. Just oh, a lot of confusion on the side. And let's see if the lions find out. We got a seven. I think that's Daddy Lion. Daddy Lion shows up. Begin the hunt immediately. All right. No benefit from herbs gathering. Leave that here. Daddy Lion shows up. I don't know why I moved that. Second hunt. Easy peasy second hunt. Which means we gain rewards again for everybody. This is most excellent. Okay. Just one thing at a time. <sighs> Six and eight. Three and seven. Ten card deck. Shuffle this. On arrival. Let's get our bonuses back. We got Rhythm Chaser. Excuse me. Alright, fine. Strength token. We got... That's stacked? Not stacked, I don't know. Red Fist, Red Fist, Red Fist. Red fist. Rhythm chaser. Rhythm chaser. Rhythm chaser. Okay. Uh, gain one survival for lion harp on everybody. So everyone's still at max. And then we have stone noses. Benefits and stone noses benefits. Oh shit. I was supposed to add plus two to my investigation roll for Tiki. Tiki rolled the high number. So instead of nothing happening, I don't have it here, but tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> That. Supposed to be attentive. I don't remember what number Tiki had. I think she had the seven, which means she actually had a nine. I'm pretty sure we got an extra lion claw. I will review this video footage. Let me set a reminder. This will be a reminder to check. I'll fix this later. Uh. Yeah, reminder token. I'll review the video footage afterwards. I can't check it now. Check to see if Tiki got a lion claw. And I'll add it afterwards. Uh, because I, I'm pretty confident she got one, I'm actually going to... Alright, never mind. I'm going to leave it in the deck. And if we draw both of the Lion Claws, I guess it'll just... You know what? I forgot. I forgot. Let it fizzle. Let's let it fizzle. I think she's supposed to get a Lion Claw, though. Anyway. We can add that onto the times I cheated. But it's two negative cheats. <laughs> but that's just the easiest thing to do. I'm not gonna scum for an extra Lion Claw. Anyway. Any other arrival bonuses? I don't think so. So we have two tall grass again, and a stone face this time. What are the odds of that? Alright, this time I'll have the line facing down. I'll put a grass here. Two, three, four. Put a grass here. I'll put a grass here. And then a grass here. We'll surround him in grass. Most excellent. Alright, and then a giant stone face. Uh, giant stone face. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Thing that goes where? Five spaces away from all board edges. I've never asked this question before. 
Does terrain allow the stack like that? Would this count as a giant stone face and a tall grass tile? I need to check the rules on terrain. I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to touch, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I'm just gonna put this face uh, right... You know what? The lion's gonna be standing on it. That's in the way. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. I'll put it right there. But it has to be right here. Five in. Okay. Sure. I should set this up to be a little more competitive, right? have a bell, Gordon, three, four, five, six, Lena, five, six, Kiki. Jeez, man. Alright, I shuffled. We're ready to go. I think. We're ready for hunt number two in the same year. Alright, White Lion goes first. He's gonna maul. No one was grabbed last round, no one is knocked down. He's gonna sniff. I don't have my sniff token currently, so I'm just gonna like do this. He sniffed. So everyone is a threat until the end of the next round. I have another opportunity to grind this stupid cat. Uh, properly this time. Maybe we can empty this damn deck. Just give me a moment. I, I need to like, uh, plan out. I, I don't even know what to do. Lena go first. She's going to activate the Twilight Sword. And roll a two. That'll be a miss. We're gonna have Tiki go next. Get behind Lena. Activate the counterweighted axe. This is a three and a five. That's two more misses. We don't have accuracy, right? She does have an accuracy. That hit, then. He has an accuracy. Did she have an accuracy all last time? Probably. Alright, so that's one hit. Five hits. Hits on a six. We have a strange hand. You ready to crit? That lag, though. Six is a wound. So we at least get a wound. Hold on, I got an itch. I has an itch. All right. So that was Tiki. Tiki caused the wound. Tiki will gain another proficiency. Gordon, we don't have to attack with. I'm gonna have Gordon scry. Combo claw and grasp. Combo claws just fine. Leave that on top. And let me just double check. Is this closest threat facing? I'm gonna move a bell up. One, two, right there. Gordon can stay put. Alright, that's our turn. So, next round, this is the sniff round. So, we're all threats. She's gonna think the mother's returning home, so she'll be barking for a minute with excitement. Closest threat facing in range. That is a bell. No doubts about it. Four plus accuracy. A bell's in the grass, hits on a six. A bell has two evasion, hits on an eight. So we got two dice. Two dice. That is one hit. So, whoops. One hit, two. To the hands, the arms location, one damage. I'm gonna 
dodge that. I'm allowed to, right? I am allowed to. I'm gonna dodge that. Bend the survival and say nay, foul beast. Okay, so that was combo claw. We're gonna start with a bell. Two, three, four, five. We're gonna get in blind spot. The lion, and we're gonna fist and tooth him once more. Let him know what we did to his friend. We're gonna do to him too. That is a miss, unfortunately. I'm gonna well, let's be aggressive. Why not? I'm gonna surge. Let's surge. We'll fist and teeth again. In between turns. That's two more misses, so being aggressive didn't matter. Alina will have her go and Twilight Sword. That's a miss too. Uh, Gordon, I'll have him move up and take the next hit. Tiki will have her hide in the grass. Gordon goes, Tiki goes, and Tiki's in the grass. I think that about covers it. Yeah, so we will end our turn. It's the start of a new round. I get the third back. And I didn't flip over to dodge for a bell, but we get that back too. Grass, closest knockdown survivor in range. Closest survivor in range. Alright, the lion would probably attack a bell as he is the weakest person. And he's the closest survivor in range, and it would be advantageous for him to show his butt not towards these. So, grasp. That's a miss, because we have two evasion. It's on a four. Don't worry about anything else. The sniff is gone. Sniff was gone at the beginning of, or at the end of combo claw. Sniff's <laughs> been gone. Okay. Uh, Gordon will back up one and scry the monster's attack deck. Chomp and Bloody Claw. I'm gonna go with a Bloody Claw. We'll have a bell go next. Get into the blind spot. And Fist and Tooth. Like we. Fist and Tooth Lions all our lives! Six! That's not a hit. We hit on a seven. I do not have the accuracy increase. Alright. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spend my strength token as a survival with Red Fist ability and Surge. I'm trying to get this damn wound. I just I can't hit this thing. Okay. Lena. One, two, three, four, five. Gonna Twilight Sword. She can't hit either. This lion is pretty dodgy. Alright, I'm gonna have Tiki walk out of the grass. Let me read the rules on this. Okay, yeah, so she's a threat again since I moved out of a space on the grass and then I'll walk around and go stand in it, but I won't activate it. The way the lion will go after her. And uh, we'll end their turn. Actually, I don't know if it'll go out of her. It won't go after her. Bloody Claw. Everyone's tied with the most bleeding tokens, which is zero. That's how this works. So he'll target either Lena or a bell, and the bell is the weakest. So he'll target a bell. It's two dice. It's on twos. Eight and a nine. Those will both hit bell, so. Let's see where we're getting hit and how we want to proceed. Body and the foot. So that's two damage each. Uh, I'm going to dodge the body and take two to the foot, which will knock me down. And then we'll have Gordon encouraged. Actually, I don't have to do that. We're fist and two. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> I 
Let me see something. I need to see it on the, the current glossary. I think this is why you want Fist and Tooth Mastery, right? I just want to double check. Knock down. When you knock down, turn it on the side. Knock down. Survivors always stand at the end of the next monster turn. Survivors knock down in the middle of their attack. The remain of that attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So because we have Fist and Tooth Mastery, I actually don't need to encourage them. Specialization. This is once per round, so we're going to stand at the start of our turn. And we get two bleeding tokens for the rest of this attack. The lion ends this turn, we stand, and we are bleeding a bit. Just a little bit. Nina has things. Alright, we're gonna go with uh, Lena first. Four, five, and use that Twilight Sword. That's a hit. On the femur. That's a critical wound. On the femur. And a minus one movement. A wound. And a random white lion. Random white lion resource. Goodish. Got some tail action up in here. Okay, and that'll be another weapon proficiency for Lina. A bell will go next and we'll try and get him. Hopefully we don't hit the trap, because the bell could actually die. Two and five, I'm not gonna surge anymore with a bell. We're just gonna end the turn. I'll move Gordon up and Gordon can scry. All right, let's take the uh, take the power swat. This is threat facing in range. Tiki will hide in the grass again. I'm just looking at her stuff over here. Yeah, we'll just we'll just hide in the grass for now. Oh, lion. Power SWAT. Closest threat facing, it would be Gordon. Gordon will be a power swatted. One dice. That's an eight. That is a hit. I'm just gonna dodge it with Gordon, so let's roll for Rawhide. That's a six, so we keep our survival and we spent our dodge for the ring. Okay. Our turn. A bell. Actually, I'm gonna do Lena first and Rawhide bandage a bell, and then a bell will fist and tooth the lion. That's a hit! Finally. Can we not fail this? That's a critical wound! Oh, we're doing great now. Another minus one movement as we fracture the shoulder of the lion. And a wound. Okay, now we can go in and do what we need to do. We got all of our weapon proficiencies once again. We're gonna move a bell. Two, three, four, five over here. Gordon will scry the lion deck. Alright, once again, no lick as far as I'm aware. So, grasp. That's fine. Terrifying war is annoying. Let him grasp. Uh, this is recharged. This is just the next round. And everything else is pretty much good to go. So we're just gonna grind him out. Grasp, closest knockdown is no one. Closest in range is the tie between Lena and Gordon. Lena, I. I we evasion, Gordon is four in grass, so he'll go after Lena. Roll a dice. Alright, that's a five. Three evasion on two, he hits on five, so that is a hit. Lena cannot dodge, so it's one damage to the brain, 
And then I'll do a second damage to the brain because no matter where I get hit for grab, we're just gonna take it to the brain. So, what is it? Move away from all threat. She's not a threat. These two are a threat. Uh, if I was to move this away from all threats, we could go this way. I think what would happen here is we would go this way because both threats are on this side. The lion. And she's not a threat, she's in the grass. Oh yeah, and he only moves forward. <laughs> the lion goes right here, Lena gets dragged. But she thinks she's immortal. And she kind of is. Sort of. Okay. Uh, I'm going to think for a minute. The next round. We're gonna have a bell hide in the grass. We're gonna have Gordon, who's got this back. Right, and this is back. We're gonna encourage. Lena to stand up. So let me encourage the six. We keep it thanks to Rawhide and Lena's back up. Keep the survival. We're gonna have uh two, three, four, five. Man, I can't get the synchronized strike to work, but we'll have Tiki one, two, three. We'll have Tiki move over to here. Do nothing. Look good. We'll have Lena. Four, five, get in the blind spot. Fist and tooth. That is one hit or no? Eight, seven in the blind spot. That's one hit. On the paw. Some Mario Party music. <laughs> I remember this song. Alright, two. Two is a failure, so we will get basic action that plus two damage. Two dice, basic action. There's a six and a seven. That's two hits. This is three damage to our arms and our body. Ah, uh, I can't dodge. We're immortal. It's actually six damage to our brain. We're getting knocked pretty sane at the moment in this line, which is not great. Because I need to be insane in order to use this stupid sword. Uh... Yeah, okay. It is our move. We're going to... These guys are never going to be in position to do what I want. Tell you what, I'll, I'll prepare for it this way. I'm gonna go in the grass with Lena next round. So Lena's gonna go and encourage again. We'll synchronize strike here. So we hit on the seven, but we have the plus one strength. There's a perfect hit and a nine, so combo master. We'll proc. We get three hits. Pretty lucking out without a trap card around. I'm gonna do it in this order here. So first card, that's a seven, that's a wound. Uh, we wound on an eight, crit on an eight, because we have plus one luck, right? Yeah. The wound, no crit, no benefits, no negatives. Second location. That's a critical wound! Oh shit! Oh shit! I might be able to get... No, I think I discarded the card. Alright, that's for the wound. He has no jaw. I think we discarded the bite effect. Roll 1d10 on resolve 5 plus, the jaw flies off the face! The lion. We got a five plus. All right, 
knock the jaw clean off the lion. Attack gains plus one courage and plus one survival. I can make that an achievement. I'm gonna be doing achievements for like every monster, so. One courage, we don't care about survival. Achievement list! So this can be a white lion achievement. I guess I'll do like. Uh, monsters as the main category. And then we can do white lion. I'll make this look prettier and prettier as we go on. Knocked the jaw clean off the lion's face. What is the dialogue on this? Flies off his face. Uh... <clears throat> we punched it too. I'm just gonna leave it as clean off because saying flies off or flew off Punch the jaw clean off the lion's face We have done that and that was Season one Nina did that which speaking of which I wanted to add the names here Lena got the sword too. So Lena is currently achievement master and this will be updated as I do more fantastical things. Alright, so that's the second location. This is the third one. Right. Mine has no jar jaw. If I'm lucky, I don't think it's in here. He didn't bite us, that's why I'm not lucky. Uh we could have gotten infinite insanity on Lena. Last location. That is a 3, 3, and 3 is only 6, so that is a failure. White line, 1, 2, 3, 4. A little full move, 4, and then stop. Be scared of all. Okay. So, that was Lena. Tiki hasn't gone yet. I was going to reposition her to 3, just so I could... Well, I got the synchronized strike there. We'll have Tiki move next to the lion and chill. We'll just chill. Alright, next turn. Combo Claw! The closest threat facing. Bell's hiding in the grass, so there's actually nobody. The closest threat in field of view is these two. That's the closest. So Gordon and Tiki. Gordon has more evasion than Tiki's and more armor, technically. We're gonna target Tiki. Combo Claw. An 8 and a 4. The 8... Oh, I don't even know if the 8 hits, right? We're in the grass. We have plus 3. It hits on the 7. So the 8 hits, the 4 misses. Taking 1 damage to our waste. I'm just gonna take that. Of course it's the waste. Why wouldn't it be somewhere else? Alright, not a big deal. I'm just taking a look at all my characters. I think we're good to go for still grinding, and we're actually finally in a good position. I'm gonna have Gordon go first. Two, three, four. I'm gonna scry. Yeah, we have lost hand locations. Let's try to get rid of Bloody Claw. And then let's have Lena go. Three, and she will synchronize strike. As that refreshes. I oh, I never moved that card over. We hit on a six. We got one hit over the beast's back. Can we crit the back of the beast? Man, it's really laggy today for some reason in this tabletop simulator. Okay, we actually fail, so he's going to move to the wall, and Tiki's gonna get grabbed, which is not ideal. Oh boy, bear maker music. Get grasped. One damage to the body. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. Gordon! Gordon's gonna encourage... 
lose our survival for that. Pick Tiki back up. Uh, no, I actually... Right, I did want to do that. So I want Tiki to take the hits. If she must. I don't like the line being on the edge here. Let's move Tiki. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I have to stay within three if I'm gonna be in range. Alright. And then we'll just end our turn. This is a much better grind at the moment. The closest survivor with the most bleeding tokens. We are all tied. Tiki is the closest. So the white lion will be right here. And go after Tiki. Two dice. Six and a five. Hits on. I mean the hit space. Hits on a two. It's on a three. So it's two hits. Taking some damage. Body and arms. Alright, we'll take it to the arms. I'll actually dodge the body and get two bleeding tokens. And that's the end of that attack. I may just want to end up killing this lion now. I don't know. He has a lot of, uh, like, mostly I need to get with a bloody claw if possible. Let Gordon go first. Gordon will scry. Alright, Maul is a good card. Grass. Put Grasp on top. Uh, I'm gonna leave Gordon where he is. Let's move these. Let's have Tiki go. One, two. Put Tiki right here. And then let's have Tiki not do anything. We're gonna have Lena go. She's gonna synchronize strike again. We'll get adjacent to the lion on the opposite side of our partner. And synchronized strike. Synchronized strike's been pretty good. Alright, so we hit on the nine. Straining neck. Can we do another achievement? I don't want to. We critically wound the straining neck. Will we insta kill the lion? Okay, no insta kill. On the line, but he is paralyzed, so he's knocked down. Uh, I don't see a reason to rush doing damage to him. He's just gonna maul, which means he's just gonna sniff. So we'll end our turn there. This is the next round. Get our encouraged back. The lion will stand up. And Maul. No one was grabbed, no one's knocked down, so Lion will sniff and end his turn. Our move, we'll just do the same thing again, although I'm gonna put Tiki in harm's way. I'm gonna put Gordon in harm's way too. I normally wouldn't do this. Oh, you know what? Gordon doesn't have the bandages. <laughs> I was gonna bandage. We'll leave Tiki in harm's way. One, two, two. <laughs> We're gonna synchronize strike in the blind spot. So, let's uh, do that again. Okay, we have two misses, so that failed. Uh, Gordon can go and scry the AI's card, Grasp. Lena can't dodge the grass, so she would actually be the target. Uh... Uh... 
That's fine. Let's keep grinding the line out. We'll end their turn. So the line goes... Grasp. Closest knockdown survivor is no one. Closest one in range is a tie. And just like I said, uh, between Tiki and Lena, Lena can't use her dodge. Although Lena can't be damaged either. Tiki... Tiki is the most wounded. I don't know what would the lion prefer to go after, a kill? Probably a kill, right? He's not going to actually hurt Lena. Just make her more sane. I mean, on a meta level, getting rid of insanity on Lena is a good thing, but it doesn't help the lion kill anybody. I'm going to go after Tiki, because she is the most wounded. And that's the logic I'm going to use for that, so... Grabbing Tiki. Uh, six will hit. And Tiki is the one in the front, so Tiki will dodge it. And the survival, use your dodge. And then we'll end there. Well, that's the lion's turn. On their turn, Lena will synchronize strike. Alright, we have one hit thanks to the blind spot and synchronized. It is the fleshy gut of the lion. It is uh, eight. Uh, that's a critical wound, so it's gonna vomit all over Lena, and it feels awesome getting three insanity back. We cause a wound! And we gain a random resource. Basic. Cool. Very nice. This is why we farm it. Let's have, um... One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna move Tiki there. I'm gonna move a bell over here. We're gonna bandage Tiki with a bell. And then I'm gonna move Gordon. One, two, three, four... Not in front of it, or into the grass next to it, so he's the closest. And then we will end our turn. What does she have? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Alright, next move. Grasp. Closest in range is a tie, Lena and Gordon. Lena's easier to hit, so I'm gonna go after Lena now. Oh, that's a three. That'll miss Lena. I think that misses Lena. How much evasion you have? Yeah, that'll miss Lena. I haven't been paying attention. Lena's been knocked down in the past, and she doesn't have an instrument, right? But she actually doesn't have this, which means she still dodges the three. But she lost Rhythm Chaser a while ago. Yeah, Lena was knocked down. Gordon was not. Okay, now that I've fixed that problem. Grass miss. So it's our move. We're going to... Two, three, four. We'll just have Lena get into the blind spot and continue the farm. Just in teeth farming. We have a perfect hit. That's one hit. And then combo master. That's one hit. Alright, soft belly. That is not a wound as a failure. Alright, I think I'm just gonna kill this lion now. Oh no. Nah, I'm being I'm being lazy. Keep farming it. We're not in any huge danger. I wanna get rid of Bloody Claw. If Bloody Claw is there, I might attack it. Let's scry with Gordon. Alright, I'm gonna put Bloody Claw on top. We're gonna go with Tiki. Four, we'll get in the blind spot. Tiki will attack with the counterweighted act. That was two hits. Alright, Temple and Ribs. We'll do the Ribs first. 
That is a two. Two and four is six and three is nine. So that's a wound. Which is encouraging. History understanding. So gains the survival. Causes a wound. Second location. That's a critical wound. Wall up the lion in his damn temple. Persistent injury. Alright, well, now we can finish grinding the last two spots. So, White Lion's turn before I draw that AI. Let's check the Walloped Head. Alright, he, he knows what he's doing, so he's gonna grasp. No one's knocked down. Three targets are in range. Um, Tiki's not in the grass and is the most hurt, so we're gonna go after Tiki. That is a four. We have one evasion, so that does hit. Tiki's gonna have to dodge that, which we do have. I just never flip that back over. Alright, so that was the lion grasp. On our turn. Lena will do Lena things. Get some more fist and tooth action going on. And uh, a bell on the harp just started playing this song <laughs> for the survivor. The whole time he's playing all the music. He's very talented. Very talented. Okay, we have two misses with Lena. So, Grasp. Grasp is costing me rerolls. Let's have Tiki Fist and Teeth, why not? Fist and Teeth. Alright, she missed. There's sevens. Let's have Gordon Fist and Teeth. I'm just trying to get the deadly so I can crit. <laughs> Alright, he missed. Okay, so everybody went. It is the next round, we gotta dodge back. Lion will grasp, it's gonna be Tiki again, which... I made a few mistakes. When he grasped Tiki, he turned to face her, which means, Lena, I would've moved into the blind spot. I could've set up the... thing. I wanna fix this. This is the positioning I should've done. I got... see, I was getting lazy again. Which I will admit, I need to stop doing that. This is how things would've been. But now he won't go after Tiki. I think he has three evasion now. Gordon's still six. Nina's two. No, he'll go after Tiki. Tiki has to spend survival or get hurt. One dice for grasp. And it's a critical failure. It doesn't matter. Alright, that's discarded. Also, I forgot. That first dice roll, that critical failure, he wouldn't have even drawn this card because I have to roll for the temple first. Oh my goodness. None of this matters at the end of the day. We're gonna decimate the stinking lion. I'm just gonna attack with Lena. Fist and tooth. You guys know the drill by now. We have a combo master hit. We have a combo master hit. We're gonna get that trap card today. All right, two hits. No trap. I will do the ear first. Alright, tabletop says it's a three, so that's a failure. Three and three is only six. White line will jump back, and that will knock me one, two, three, four, five. Because of collision, we're gonna go along the wall. And then miss out on this attack. I'm just gonna kill this lion now. Tiki! Counterweight of that. It's range two. We got a seven. That's one hit. Tricep. That's a six. That's a wound. Alright, Gordon, King Spear. I'm actually gonna move him back one for this. We got a six. That's a hit. Fuzzy groin. We get. In, I can't get another deck actually. <laughs> Funnily enough, this lion has no balls. 
It's a nine, not a crit, but we kill a lion. All right, I, I didn't want to keep messing with the lion. I'm getting sloppy. I didn't expect to do such a damn long recording. Clinging Mist Hunt is finished. Let's do what we need to do. Okay, let's remove him here and put this stuff back again. Alright. Get rid of those. <laughs> Need a white fur. All this time I have not gotten a white fur. Thank God we have finally finished the armor set. Until I roll an event that I lose like all my stuff. Alright, skull. When we get the skull, someone gains an insanity, we'll give it to Lena. She needs all the insanity now. Okay. Clinging Mist Hall. Let me leave this to the side from now on since questionable rules like this occur. But uh, now we get rewards for the lion. So everyone gains experience and stuff. Alright, cool. And we now have a axe specialist. Alright, and that there and water. So when attacking with the axe, if our wound attempt fails, we can ignore that and attempt to wound the selected hit location again, <laughs> once per attack. Very cool. We get seven endeavors, and now because this was the second hunt, the lantern year does not advance. We do not get another settlement event, right? Yeah, I think we don't get another fucking thing. But I don't know. We heal. And... Clinging a Mist needs some errata. <laughs> it needs to just be more thoroughly discussed. I don't think we draw another... Do we? I don't think we do, because we're not entering a new lantern year. And you only draw one. Right? We're not skipping to lantern year nine. I don't think. I think it's just it's supposed to be like an extra hunt because we got lost on our way back. So we. That's what I would do when I get lost. I'm like, oh, we're kind of lost, so why don't we just hunt another white lion and then maybe we'll find our way back, right? Jesus. <laughs> it's a really good roll to get Clinging Mist high. It's just going to be deleted. It's complicated, man. It's complicated. Okay. I think I'll end the video here then. We have a hell of a haul. We have returned. We've made it back this time and get lost in the mist. I don't think we will do another thing. Let me know what you guys think. Alright, first of all, this, this was a messy video. What a messy return to Kingdom Death. I... Need to pay attention to more details. The game is starting to get more complicated now. We're getting into the mid game and there's stuff to think about. But yeah, I'm gonna prepare everything we need to do. I can tell you one thing I'm gonna do no matter what. I'm gonna innovate. Let's just do that now. And then I'll end the video. So, hide, organ, bone. Is this really the only bone we got? Besides the great cat bone is a claw and this. Okay. Let's innovate. The rest of it we'll do later. Paint. Paint. 
Paint. Paint. Okay. No paint. <laughs> I'm gonna get nightmare training. I'm gonna definitely get nightmare training. You know what? I might just do the whole settlement phase now. Why not make this video obnoxiously long? Hold on, I'm listening for the phone. I don't think it's anybody important. So, education. Nightmare training. No consequences added. This also thins the deck. And, uh... Should just overall be good for us. Let me see something real quick. Okay. I'll do the rest of this later. I need to, like, investigate why the dog is barking so much. Oh yeah, we did have other bones. I just didn't separate all this stuff. This is what we actually got. That's okay, I don't need that lion claw. This is what we actually got. This is two hunts in one year, plus mass confusion. Thank you very much for sticking it out with me. I do apologize. It was pretty rough. A few things, like I said, I just added it as a cheat earlier, but I think Tiki got us another Lion Claw, because there's four of them in the deck, so we could have had the third. And I believe, I don't know, it, this, this was just like a weird session. How do you guys handle Clinging Mist when you do the hunt reenactment? If we chose the other option, to start a new survivor or start a new game they become the starting survivors for a new settlement starting with the first story settlement phase people see this is why i don't know if people are accurate and that thread the threads on board game geek as usual but uh, the FAQ for this clinging mist does not say that if you start the new campaign, they keep their stuff. It just says if they go on the hunt, they can't change their gear grids before they depart again, right? Which is covered in the card. But some people are saying if you start the... I think if you start the new thing, right, if you start the new campaign over, you lose all this stuff, obviously, you do the returning survivors, uh, the first story, you do the first story settlement phase from scratch, and I think you lose all your gear. Some people are saying you keep your gear. This card doesn't say you keep your gear. It just says if you go on another hunt, don't change the gear grid. Because, you know, they don't have time to change your stuff. Or they're not getting back to base. They can't change your stuff. I don't think you keep your stuff if you go to a new campaign, though. Although some people worded that because they got lost, they decided to start a new settlement. That's their solution to being lost. Which is kind of funny. Because it means they just have to have stumbled upon another Watcher out in the world. But I know there's multiple of them, and I guess if you roll that high, you get that lucky, but... Anyway, how do you guys handle Clinging Mist? I think this is the first time we've done it on stream. This is the first time I've gotten this result on Clinging Mist. Not stream, video recording. I've never done 8 to 10 with my friends either, so I don't know how they would interpret it. But, how would you guys handle it? This, this is the way we're gonna do it. They're lost endeavors, keep the resources, apparently. Don't move on to another additional year. Speaking of which, it's Lantern Year 8. It's nothing happening. Nice and peaceful. We're gonna have to fight the, the Knight and the Nemesis. Next year, but for this year we get to do, we're gonna move on to antelope farming. Since I have so much crap, I can actually make a cat eye circlet now so we can 
do some shenanigans if I survive long enough to do shenanigans. Uh, that's if I survive long enough to do shenanigans. We shall see. The new timeline quite different. Anyway, thanks for watching again. Sorry this went on so long. How long is this recording? Two hours, two and a half. I've been doing good with under two hour video sessions. Yeah, let me get out of here. This is the perfect music for ending a video, right? Fucking Kirby. Kirby credits. <laughs>